have a serious question, actually. Do you think Subway is just the biggest troll in the world at this point? Like the way they go about advertising their stuff? I don't even think it's trolling. I think they just know that everyone's going to troll them. So they're they're just genius, genius marketing at this point. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but is it a troll? Yeah. If you're going to put out troll-worthy content, like troll-worthy advertisements, knowing that you're <laughs> going to get trolled, then you're actually a troll. Subway's been doing this for years to perfection. Everyone makes fun of them. Everyone's like, ah, we don't like Subway, but we low-key love their content. I mean, they're, the Tom Brady commercials were epic when he did that. The, I remember the one with, but you don't eat bread. You remember that one? No, but it sounds oh. fucking awesome. It smells so good, I can almost taste it. But you don't eat bread. Okay, so Russell Wilson's commercial with Subway got posted on Twitter this morning, and it's like the worst piece of content I've ever seen, but the engagement is through the roof. It's uh, it's like an all-time high, and it was perfect timing, which is why I ask, I wonder when they film this, right? Because this and, one's new, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I've never seen it before. The until. first one where he's like, it's spicy and all that bullshit, like that was when he was with the Seahawks still, right? No, that was recent pretty sure i don't I really feel, remember any of them i'm pretty sure they're all recent it's a new sandwich and he's promoting it i don't know it's dude. just I a second that. commercial for it because they realized the first commercial went super we viral a, they got how many yeah but we got to fact check when that first one came out because i feel like he, he was with the seahawks nobody just cared like nobody cared because he was like good no, at that football was the Mr. unlimited video i don't know about the c i don't know about the, the danger which i feel like that's new they're both new yeah okay which one are you talking about Talking about the last one where it's it's spicy. I don't even. I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have the original one. The first one. I didn't know there was an original one. The, what are you talking about? PFT had the. What the, are you talking about? Is what I'm saying. The first Russell Wilson Danger Witch sa uh, sandwich commercial where he was like, uh, he's I'm like dangerous. talking to the camera. Are you dangerous? Like, watch out! It's spicy. Like, you know. yeah, that doesn't ring a bell for me. What do you mean? We How, we have you a off the about internet it. for like. We have a TikTok last, about it. Yeah, dog. This is the one that started it all. Right. Let me see. It's absurd that you haven't seen it. I'm, I've never seen this. Are you serious? Yeah. This was the first one. Uh, you keep saying that, but I'm telling you, I just haven't seen this. Okay, that's crazy that you haven't seen the first one. When did that come out? I thought it like came out when ago. he was a Seahawk, but apparently yeah. it came out like a month ago. It was like a month ago. It was his first commercial promoting the sandwich, and then this is the second one now that we're talking about. Right. With the, all the different options where he's wearing the leather jacket. Here comes the airplane. Look, here's the deal. I need to say this. I need to get out of the way. Obviously, it's a corny commercial, but it's genius marketing, and it's Russell Wilson. So they're just they're leaning into it now. They're leaning so hard into this. They well, that's know what I'm that saying. They're so gonna, they know what they're doing here. Yeah, they know people are going to go out and buy the sandwich and remake the video. Like we're already talking about doing it. Yeah, I have nothing else to say about it because. I'm going to start getting angry. All right, so Russell Wilson, we're over him. Someone else, Mr. Dak Prescott. Dak is back, uh, set to start this week. That's pretty exciting, I think, for fantasy for fantasy owners. If you have C.D. Lamb, you're probably a little excited, I would, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely, C.D.'s been pretty good. I mean, he's been good regardless of it. Dak is, um, you know what's so weird? It's just how, like, anytime a backup quarterback comes in, they play really well for, like, two or three games. And I get it. It's like, oh, they don't know who this guy is. But I feel like you're just, like, not that good of a quarterback. Like, you shouldn't play that well against NFL defense regardless i feel like this happens every time i mean was cooper rush like really playing well or was he just kind of managing games and that's fair and but he's some... winning games it's so right. hard to win games in the it NFL, is you it know? is and it's not like zeke was like putting the team on it like the running game was like putting no. i guess defense. Their, de their defense was yeah, but. The defense yeah. was and they just ran the ball they didn't turn it over and that was it he, he's been like they did turn it over it was against the eagles and they got you know they lost yeah it's, he's been like the poor man jimmy g He's in that class of, like, he's serviceable for, you know, a month, but you definitely don't want to run a whole season with him. Cowboys are ready, too, as long as you get It, it feels like everybody's kind of down on Dak and, and pretty high on, on Cooper Rush. It feels like people think that it'd be, like, a good idea to, I don't know, ship off Dak is, for, I don't even know what you get in return, but just, people feel like they're ready to move on to Cooper Rush. Is this going to be that situation where people are going to be like, oh, the team plays better with Cooper Rush? Like, mm -hmm. I don't, they shouldn't be starting Dak. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some annoying shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited I to get Dak back. I, I, I Like, a lot of the product of football this year, I feel like, has been kind of shitty. And it's been, like, a lot of bad quarterback play or a lot of injured quarterbacks. And it's like, no one, like, the NFL is a bad fucking product when the, when the quarterbacks aren't healthy. Agreed. Yeah. So, Dak is back. Looking forward to that. Tua is back also. Tua is Dua. I can't believe you, like, didn't just lead with that line. Yeah, I yeah. know. I was well, so ready to fucking hit the bang on you. Edit editors can. Hey, ready, ready, <laughs> hold on, ready? So that's Dak, right? All right. Tua is Dua. Oh, shit. shit. <laughs> bang. <laughs> got him. I'm excited to get Tua back for my fucking you fantasy be. team. I mean, because I got Winston out here with a broken fucking skeletal system. I've I uh, picked up Kenny Pickett, then had to drop him. I need I need a second quarterback, and Tua is the guy for me. Still can't believe Tua had a six touchdown game. Are we underestimating how good Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are together? 
Yeah, so that's where I was kind of going to go from here. Um, they both had very good games without without him. So, like, is there any difference here, or are we just like this is a two a thing only? Like, it's definitely an upgrade to him. Is it? I feel Hill, like, like Hill feels like he's bulletproof regardless. Yeah. Waddle feels like his floor is much better when two is in the lineup. Like, he had the ma- massive game last week. What did he, he go for like a buck fifty or something like that? But the game before that, I think the two games before that, he was at like 40, 50 yards. But anytime two is on the field, it feels like Waddle is a safe bet for like seventy, yeah, 80, no, 90 yards. You're right. Yeah, right. a great game last week, and then two before that. Were kind of stinkers yeah so. so i think when two is back on the field it's like just waddle hill waddle hill waddle hill so those two are back to being you know borderline wide receiver ones i think with two under center all right oh, so yeah. two is back waddle's back tyreek hill was kind of he never left yeah he never left all right and then lastly for the news here uh new york sports new york, sports, bike. New york sports for bike we got the new york giants who are Five and five and five one. one. Five and one. The Jets, who are four and two. Both of these teams beat the Packers, by the way. The Aaron Rodgers led Packers. I don't know if that means anything, but they're going to tell you it does. And then uh, the Knicks played basketball, and they only lost by three points. In <laughs> Girls, so. And the Knicks played basketball. <laughs> you're, you're forgetting the Yankees, who were in the. Uh, yeah, I don't watch baseball. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's big. You're talking about the New York Sports. There's only like four right. teams to talk about. Yeah, you no. forget the one that's in the fucking playoffs. Right, right the now. Yankees are in the playoffs, too. Uh, so, yeah, New York Sports are back. Hopefully, it. It will bring some energy out in the city. We get that, you know, when, when the city's alive again, so that'll be nice. It yeah. is a cool feeling, I'll, although none of us really care for any of these teams, so I don't know if it's going to be that big of a change for any of us personally. Huge Knicks fans. That's yeah. right. I forgot yeah. about that. It's a lifestyle out here. Right. You guys watch basketball? Totally. For sure. Like at like 30 games in a start. Yeah. I would watch yeah. basketball if they fucking allowed me to watch it here. Yeah, you you can't, can't turn it on the TV in New York. It's like you're out of station. I'm like, what are you talking about? I live yeah. fucking five minutes <laughs> from where they're playing the I game I can hear right them now. playing outside. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go buy a ticket to the goddamn game. All right, so that's for everything we got for the news. Let's uh, head into some bye weeks real quick. Let you know who's on bye this week. And then uh, we're going to do the... Uh, I'm going to change it now from best or bust to beast or bust because someone recommended that and I liked it. So I like yeah, it better we can than flex best. when we do it too. Yeah. Um, all right, real quick, bye weeks. Got some big we ones. We could this do week. trap, traps or trap, you know, like trap or trap. No, yeah, I like that. Maybe. maybe. Like, maybe are next they a trap or are they fucking flexing their traps? Yeah, maybe next week. As for this week on bye week seven, we got the Buffalo Bills, brutal for fantasy owners. Minnesota Vikings, brutal for fantasy owners. Philadelphia Eagles, Brutal for fantasy owners. And then the Rams, if you have cup, that's us. Yeah, I was going to say cup, cup owners. <laughs> if you have cup, that's not good. Powerhouse bye week. Powerhouse. Bills have, you have almost like three to four players per team here that are going to hurt fantasy rosters. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm um, I'm a guy who has a lot of Josh Allen this year. He's been carrying a lot of my teams, Must too. Be nice. So it is nice. So I'm a little worried this week. Um, and then I like how he says that. Like, I'm a guy that has a lot of Josh Allen as if, like, he went out of his way to, like, draft. Yeah. He targeted Josh Allen. Like, he didn't yeah. have the one-on-one in every <laughs> yeah. fucking draft. I mean, I, I took Jonathan Taylor with the one-on-ones. Yeah. Fucking terrible. Big mistake. Look, it's just, it's, it's when you're sharp, you're sharp. You do sharp things. Anyway, um, yeah, so big bye weeks this week. We're going to hopefully, we're going to talk about some guys here that, uh, actually, there's really guys that you probably wouldn't, you wouldn't probably plug these guys in for them. But we're going to help you with a few fantasy players from each position. This is beast or bust. I'm going to read a player, and you guys are going to tell me whether or not you think they're going to be a beast or they're going to bust this specific, week. This, is a, this specific okay. week, I'm going to give you their matchup and uh, their projected sleeper points and their price picks line. All right, we're going to start with the QB position. There's only two of these. We got Trevor Lawrence versus the Giants. Sleeper projected 16.6. Prize picks 225 and a half passing, line, passing yards. I'm thinking bust. That's the initial thought that I get. Trevor Lawrence, he's just been really inconsistent this week this year there's been a few spots where i thought he could perform well against you know bottom tier defenses and then he just doesn't like show up um not that he can't show up but i don't i don't think this giants team defensively is like it, it feels like an average defense but i don't know i'm just losing faith in the jaguars offense they came out pretty hot but i don't think there's any rhyme or reason to whether or not they perform on a week-to-week basis if you're in a one quarterback league like there's just got to be it feels safer like, like better half options. the players in fantasy and half the teams in the nfl there's like no rhyme or reason for anything that's fucking happening this year this has been the toughest season to so for trevor I, I think i would take the this is a weird one where i'd probably split the difference i, I kind of like the fact that we're, we're seeing a little bit more like from the rush game from him, like two touchdowns last week 23 yards almost 30 rushing yards a week before that so I might take the over on the 16 and a half fantasy points but the under on 225 passing yards on prize picks I mean it's it's his rushing production that's been making him even serviceable that's what I mean like that's why I, I might lean towards the over on the just the fantasy stuff yeah it feels like he's you know the, the offense is like taking a dip but he's 
putting it on his fucking traps yeah. to make sure that he's moving the chains. Take away those two legs. rushing touchdowns last week, and he he doesn't have a great week for you. Yeah. yeah, the week before that, or maybe two weeks, he has like five turnovers. Like it can get real bad in Jacksonville mm-hmm. and with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, he's gone over twenty points two times, and I believe rushing was a big part of both those. Nah, no, the no, first the first, first one was three touchdowns. Yeah, two sixty two three. But yeah, I mean he, he's getting his legs more involved, so I kind of like the the fantasy production. He'll be all right. Obviously, like in a super flex league, you probably don't have the. Uh, luxury of being able to bench Trevor Lawrence. You probably have have him as, like, your quarterback, yeah, too. You got to like, start. How do you feel about him? You think they're going to, you know, do right. good or bad this week? All right, we got Hall of Fame quarterback Aaron Rodgers at the Commanders. Sleeper projection, 18.5. Prize picks, 233 and a half passing yards. Beast or bust? <laughs> I'm going to go I'm gonna go with beast, but it's not, like, it's not, like, real beast, like, fully flexing the traps it's 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 more just like it's an underwhelming beast because it's it is Aaron Rodgers I'm never going to count the dude out I'm never going to say like he can't you know pick apart a defense this commander's team is kind of bad on both sides of the ball um 233 super low line obviously he's kind of been flirting with that it's not like he's been crushing this line I'm just going to go I'm going to play a safe and take the over on both one of these days, Aaron Rodgers got to snap out of it and, and start acting like himself. I want to say that, too. I'm, I'm worried about the game script for this game with Taylor Heineke under center. Commanders, though, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel like that helps Aaron Rodgers. I feel like they're not going to have to, like, make him throw the ball. I, I could see this being a game where, like, Dylan and Aaron Jones combine for, like, 30 carries or something like that, and Rodgers only throws the ball, like, 28 times. It might be efficient on it. Maybe he'll score a bunch of times. I feel like the field position they're going to get is going to be, like, really, really good throughout the game. Yeah, so, yeah I'm, I think I might take the over because I, I could see this being, like, a really efficient like three touchdown passing game for Rodgers. I don't the passing yardage game man that's it, it, sad. He's only fucking 8 yards projected above uh Trevor Lawrence, man. What does yeah. this world come to? I mean, his last like three games he's went for 246, 222 and 251. So he's just flirting right We're around just that. Just yeah, difference. Yeah. yeah. I think I would take the over on on sleeper fantasy point. You know, fuck it, let's just run it up. Let's <laughs> we, flex up. We over on everything. Over so, on everything. We beast it. All right, we're going on to the running backs. Uh we got Kenneth Walker at the Chargers. Sleeper projection, 12.75 points. Prize picks, 65 and a half rushing yards. Love this. all half PPR bash settings, by the way, for everyone. Uh, I love uh, Kenneth Walker's over on both. Specifically, the rushing yards. I think, uh, you know, the Chargers defense has not been able to stop much on the ground. 12.75, I mean, that comes down to whether or not he scores a touchdown. Probably not going to get, like, a whole bunch of work through the air, although he is involved in there. It feels like he's becoming, like, the workhorse in uh, Seattle. He kind of took over Penny's job and plus a little bit more. So, Kenneth Walker, I think, is going to be an RB1 this week. Yeah. 18 points last week. I'm with the over. Over on both of those. Yeah, 18 points last week. He had two touchdowns in two weeks. So it just I mean, feels like he's someone that's going to continue making explosive plays. Like, he's going to rip off, like, a 35 to 40-yard run every week, right? And that's, like, you basically hit the over on your rushing yards. So, all, all you need is, like, eight more carries outside of that. His yeah. agility is insane. His, so he's his, like a ballerina behind yeah, the fucking his line. his change dude. of direction, stop and go, when you just watch him, like, he's really fun to watch. A lot of fun to watch. Really yeah. fun to watch, for sure. All right, so we, we all love Kenneth Walker again. Brian Robinson go. versus the Packers. Sleeper projection, eight and a half points. Prize picks, 53 and a half rushing yards. Something doesn't line up here. I feel like the rushing yard line of 53 and a half is high, yes. but the sleeper line of eight and a half in a full PPR league is low. Yeah, that it's feels half like some, PPR. Half PPR. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Makes sense. Um, I, I would take the over on the fantasy points for sure. I hit the over last week when it was it was really low on, on prize picks, but um, I'm surprised he didn't get targeted. He was a guy who caught a lot of balls at Alabama, and they're not really using him in... If he's going to be the early down back, I would assume he'd get more dump-offs, um, but doesn't seem to be the case. I, I still think that he's the guy that... He got 17 carries last week in his uh, in the second game back. I think he clearly established himself as the guy. They're using Gibson in like weird wonky ways he's the return guy there so I think the backfield is completely Brian Robinson's which is it gives me confidence enough to put him on the over on the fantasy points low snap percentage last week 47 percent yeah I mean it is a three-way split that's why unfortunately um but he's I think also just coming back from that yeah. fucking gunshot so I well, mean I, second, I feel like second game back right it's still relatively new though I think it is you know his play time only goes up from here yeah, he went from 29 percent to 47 percent so maybe if we see that bump to like you know 57 60 something percent I do nice. think I saw a report though that Ron Rivera was saying that he thought Gibson should be more involved in the offense love that you he's had that? every opportunity to yeah no, not that I believe it, 
I just think I saw it, and because it's Ron Rivera, it's like, I don't trust that scumbag. Like, that just means Brian Robinson is going to take over Antonio Gibson's role. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to take the over on – I'm going to take the over uh, – I'm going to go over on sleeper on eight and a half points, but I'm going to take the under on the rushing yards, actually. I think he gets a little bit more involved in the passing game this weekend. All right, I got a uh, – wait, did you go, Tony? I'm going to take the over on both. Okay. I got the last running <laughs> Have you running taken under on any of them yet? Uh, not yet, no. Tony, no unders. Uh, I, I mean, if we go back to Lawrence, I'll, I would take unders on T-Law. All right, last running back. Raheem Mostert versus the Steelers. Sleeper projection, 13.3. Prize picks, 55 and a half rushing yards. Beast or bust? This is kind of tough. I'm gonna take this the. Hard. I'm gonna take the under on um on the sleeper points. Thirteen and a half feels a little hefty. It almost feels like they're projecting him to score a touchdown, which you know might happen. I still like. I'm not exactly sure if he's like the goal line back there. I'm not exactly sure. I, he gets a lot of carries, but I I still feel like the role between all these running backs can change on a dime. You know, definitely. Like, you know, you that, think they want to lean on him a little bit though? Maybe with Tua, you know. Yeah, I mean that that could certainly happen, but I could see him going like, you know, 16 for 82 or something like that. And, you know, not if he doesn't score a touchdown, then he doesn't get it. He's not super involved in the passing game. So, definitely taking the under on the um sleeper projection of 13.4 half PPR, 55 and a half rushing yards. See what I mean? Like look at the difference between Mostert and Brian yes. Robinson. So, they're basically just the rushing yardage is the same, but Mostert's projection is like five points higher. They're basically just penciling in a rushing touchdown. I think from, the Steelers from just Mostert. give up more points probably per game, so they're f- thinking that he probably could score a touchdown there. Maybe. Yeah, uh, or the Dolphins score more per game. Than I'm gonna go the under on both actually. Ooh. I agree. I like that. I think that's the play. I see the play, I like baby. The, uh, I like the yards over, but anyway. All right, wide receivers. Let's get them out of the way. Let's rip. We got one of my favorites this season: Amonra St. Brown at the Cowboys. A sleeper projection: eleven and a half points. Prize pick. 67 and a half receiving yards. Beast or bust? This this one's hard because I like Amon Ross St. Brown. I think most weeks you can pencil him in as like a top 15 receiver pretty easily, but I, I feel like the Lions match up with the Cowboys really bad. Cowboys have a nice pass rush, and I just don't want to ever back Jared Goff under heavy pressure. That's just a situation I like to stay away from. I feel like this is going to be a week the Lions offense is kind of sputtering. So against my better judgment and how good Amon Ra is, I'm going to take the under of 11 and a half fantasy points points and probably the under of 67 and a half I don't think he scores a tug this week it's it's not a good matchup for the Lions to be coming off a bye and seeing the Cowboys right away so I after getting I actually think coming off a bye nowadays hurts you more than helps you because you're not allowed to practice during that week anyways I feel like you just collect rust like you're allowed to practice there's something yeah they probably they just don't like you're not allowed to do something where it's either contact or is he fully healthy he's like fully back at practice yeah, he played a game last week uh, before the bye. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he, he might have been limited during that he game. Was he was for sure. He's, oh, yeah, okay. I do. Yeah, he was less than 100% for sure. Um, yeah, then he had a whole week to recover, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm going the over. Like, until I'm, until this guy gives me a reason to take the fucking under on him, I'm, I'm going to keep shooting yeah. upwards. That's what I mean against, like, better judgment. Is that This dude normally crushes these lines. He, he is just that legit of a fantasy receiver, real-life receiver. But, it's a I don't know, some, Yeah, something, something's up. telling me that the Lions are having a stinker. All right, on the other side of the ball, we got C.D. Lamb versus the Lions. Sleeper. Projection 15.6 points, prize picks 67 and a half receiving yards. It's uh, under fantasy over yardage. Yeah. I think Zeke has a, I think Zeke and Tony Pollard have monster games in this one. I think it's the Cowboys. I don't think they want to have Dak rip it 40 times in this game. And I, I mean, there's no reason to with the fucking ground game that Detroit cannot defend against. This is a good team for him to kind of get that, that, those reps in though. I mean, it's a good, t- yeah, for him to get back on the field and throw the ball 29 times and be like, yeah. okay, I'm comfortable back on NFL field. We'll let Zeke have 20 carries. We'll let Tony Pollard have 13, 14 touches. Let both of them go kind of bananas. So I'm going to I'm gonna take the under on the uh, on the fantasy over on the yardage. I think he gets like 70 yards. I think it's a, it's a good take. Definitely the over on his yardage. I'm going to also go over on his total fantasy points. I think uh, CeeDee Lamb could easily have a 100-yard game, uh, you know, probably like seven, eight catches. Really good chance of finding the end zone. Uh, is it just me, or does it feel like the sentiment around C.D. Lamb has been that he's like been a disappointment? It does feel that way. It, you know what it is. He so hasn't though. on the podcast I, I was I mean. on last he night. But on the podcast I was on last night, we were talking. Uh, it was like kind of dynasty focused. So we were talking about like where we would rank C.D. Lamb in terms of dynasty wide receiver rankings. And Nate was talking about Nate List was talking about like he's in my top five still. And I was like, I have a hard time pulling that trigger because C.D. Lamb's been, like, really good up to this point, but he hasn't shown that he's got, like, the real fucking dog in him, like Jefferson or, like, Jamar Chase. He hasn't had that breakout where I'm watching him and being like, oh, he's that fucking dude, you know? He's, like, kind of been gliding by, and you 
don't see those like monster ceiling games from him. He's really young and Dak's been hurt a lot of his career, which is why I think most people give him the benefit of the doubt. But we haven't seen those like explosion games that we've seen from Jefferson and Chase. When you watch those dudes, you're like, oh, they're fucking alphas and they're going to be yeah. around for the next eight years. C. Lamb feels like he... He's closer to the Judy tier. Him and Judy are kind of like... I, mean, I don't know I if I go C. that far. But almost like Amari him. Cooper, where you're like, he should be amazing and he'll have blow up games. But like, do we ever get alpha consistency over a long period? Yeah, that that's definitely fair. When you're watching the game, you, you don't get the same Jefferson, Jamal chase vibes but i think if you took his stat line and like replaced his name with another top receiver and then put the note in or the asterisk in that he was playing with a backup quarterback you would feel really good about it like if, if tyree kill threw up those numbers okay. how many and you were like oh th- but this was with skylar thompson you know you'd be like that's right. actually a really good that's stretch. the problem is like that it's an easy out being like Dak has been playing like how many games of 100 yards you think cd lamb has this year three Zero. 100 yards? 100 yards. He doesn't have a single 100 yard receiving game this Are year. Are you sure? I'm You're looking, looking at, at it right now. Cooper Rush yeah. a lot, so. That's what I mean. Like, you know, it just hasn't happened. And I'm not saying it's his fucking fault, but I'm saying that's why people look at him and are like, he's probably disappointing. Because they he, watch Jefferson getting 123 yards a game every game. You every know, single like, game. And they're like, they're not the same. You yeah. know, that's why. Like yeah. last year, I mean, he had a couple. He had three last year. He had two his rookie year. He just hasn't really been a dude who you depend on to have high ceiling games his floor has been good right 75 87 97 53 68 whatever but that's not like that's anything to really like write home about that's why it's like if you're gonna put cd in the top five like how is amon ra not right on his fucking heels yeah exactly dynasty guy it's tough um all right here's a guy who's been underrated his entire career brandon cooks at the raiders sleeper projection 10 points prize picks 56 and a half receiving yards beast or bust he's been kind of disappointing this year too a little bit I think uh, I would go under on the fantasy points just because this feels like you're basically going like a coin toss on whether or not he gets into the end zone. And I'd probably not rather not bet on that. Like his yardage lines this year, week one was good, 82, but 54, 22, 57, 20. You know, he's been like a kind of like a floor play, but barely. So uh, Cooks is the guy that I feel like remainder of the season, if I had to go like optimistic or pessimistic, I would probably lean towards like the the pessimistic side. Yeah, this more is more of like, I feel like this is a Davis Mills thing. Like, are you... Uh, confident in Davis Mills to deliver him the ball every game. I'm just not at I mean, this point. Yeah, probably not. No, you don't feel good about, you know, pairing yourself with Davis Mills, but... I do feel like 10 fantasy points is kind of low, but... It, it feels... It does feel like a low bar, and it's against the Raiders. I think this will be a higher-scoring game. Coming off a bye. Again, I don't think that actually helps, but... Exactly, it hurts. Right. Change your answer. Uh, If, if I have to take... Aside, I'm going a, I'm to a take the under of both, but don't feel good about it. It's it's a low bar. All righty, we got one of Nick's favorites, though, this week, or maybe even rest of the season. Chris Godwin at the Panthers. Sleeper projection, 11 points, prize picks, 63 and a half receiving yards. I love I like all, both. Oh, yeah, Same. Yeah. I think this is, <laughs> like, this is such a Brady all thumbs get right up. game. Yeah, yeah, this is Brady goes crazy here. Fucking 290, three touchdowns. Godwin scores, catches seven for fucking 90. Yeah. Like uh, Godwin, I'm going to like smash like 100 yard alternate lines on FanDuel. <laughs> <Yeah. Like, laughs> We're going pig all, all yeah. on this one. All the stats that Brady has left on the table for the past like two, three weeks, he's, you know, about he's making up, up for them this yeah. week against the Panthers. Panthers are a sorry ass team right now. They can't stop anything. Yeah, that, that's a team in absolute disarray. We're going to head over to Tight ends, I got two here. Mr. TJ Hawkinson at the Cowboys. We talked about the Lions a little bit before. Um, the sleeper projection is uh, 8.8 points. Prize picks 40 and a half receiving yards. Hawkinson's been so... Does he ever play well when Amon Ra is like really healthy and on the field? Well, that's the thing here. He's been so bad, but so good at moments. Yeah, the Cowboys are... I'm looking at the numbers right now. They are Actually all bad. 27th in fantasy points allowed to tight ends. They haven't allowed a single game of more than 46 yards this year. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take the unders on Hawkinson. He hasn't really given us a reason to believe in him outside of when, like, every offensive player is dead. And Swift is going to be back. I'm on Ra's back. Yeah, yeah this we looks like a disaster DJ Chark, scenario. most importantly. Bike. Yeah, give me the under. Everything that you said, I agree with. Yeah, big bust for TJ. I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to ask you guys this. More importantly, <laughs> animal. Kyle Pitts at... Cincinnati sleeper has him projected at 8.1 half PPR fantasy points. Prize picks has his line at 40 and a half receiving yards. Animal. This is so gross. Double under overs. I mean, uh, look, it's Kyle Pitts. I didn't even start him last week. Uh, it was an accident. I would have, but I just he was on my bench already, so I forgot. Uh, Who'd you start over him? Like Hayden Hurst, I think. Yeah, I like yeah. Hayden Hurst this week a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're going. We're just not <laughs> but Kyle Pitts. So what are we? Yeah. What lines uh, yeah, are we I'm, I'm on? under on everything here. I just don't uh, have any faith. Look, Mario doesn't throw the ball enough. Logan Wilson, a very good cover uh, linebacker for the Bengals too. Probably going to be all over Kyle Pitts. Uh, Kyle Pitts is just not targeted enough. 
Price picks the 40 and a half. This is crazy. His yardage it's so lines. so low. 19, 19, 87, 25, 19. Why do you keep catching 19 yards worth of balls? It's crazy. It's so I, odd. Because he gets two balls at a game. Yeah. And that's it. So, yeah, I'm taking the under on everything here. Uh, Kyle Pitts, is, it's a shame he's a great talent in a terrible scenario. Yeah. I feel like if you just take the under on Kyle Pitts every single game all year, you're probably going to make good money. Because they're just going to keep projecting him as if, like, he can hit a ceiling, which is cool, but he'll probably hit it and once every four games. And he'll hit it once games. every four Exactly. Yeah. But, like, look at us. Does, <laughs> does he even have that ceiling? Because, like, to beat this 8.1 no, projection, like, he has to score a touchdown. It's sad as fuck that we've come to this situation. But, yeah. like, that means he has to score a touchdown because he's not going to do it yardage wise I don't even think he really has the capability of scoring like two touchdowns in a game because I don't think the Falcons it's never been done by him yeah like I I, I think we're he might as well he's be physically fucking, not capable of scoring yeah two touchdowns dude, he's in not a game. he's not like if we're gonna talk about Kyle Pitt scoring two touchdowns why are we not talking about fucking Robert Tunyon scoring two touchdowns both incapable right both frauds both it's just not happening for him you know what is happening this fucking giveaway by pristine auction <laughs> Bang, motherfucker. <laughs> bang, bang. Uh, Bills gang. Listen, we got a Stefan Diggs signed helmet. Beautiful in white. I didn't even know they made white Sharpie, but they got it on there. Uh, if you are a fan of literally any sports team, you can go to pristineauction.com. The link down below will bring you right there. They've got helmets. They've got jerseys. They've got hats. They've got bats. They've got everything on that website signed by all your favorite players. They've got auctions going on all the time. You can get all this stuff for like, ridiculous value uh but we are giving this away for free to one of y'all out there that goes to pristineauction.com and when you first sign up you're going to use code bdge on the website that will automatically enter you into the free giveaway we're doing these one once a month uh, new helmet new jersey new something every single month for you guys and when you use promo code bdge that will give you ten dollars towards your first auction on pristine auction so you're getting entered into this for free you're getting ten dollars towards your first auction of your favorite team your favorite sports uh memorabilia whatever your favorite athlete go hit pristineauction.com thank you guys for the helmet and make sure you enter the giveaway love you let's continue <laughs> gotcha beat me to it why are you yelling all right enough of that uh, was not that one. Was, that was the wrong one, was the wrong one. Bing, bong. there Bing. we go <laughs> bong that is the theme of today's herd of goats Today's topic for Herd of Goats is New York's finest. Now, this will have a very lenient topic strategy here. New York's finest is just, it could be our favorite things about New York. It could be maybe our least favorite things about New York, things that make New York crazy. You know, Tony's been here for almost two years now. I've been here for a while. Animals lived in the New York area-ish, his, basically his entire life. I know enough about it. We know enough about New York to know what drives us fucking crazy in this city, um, so that's the topic for her to goats today. 101? Fuck it. Okay, sure. You could take the 101. Um, you could take 102. I think you might take my 101, but... <clears throat> I don't know. I have so many... Uh, All right, you want to go third? I've, I don't have any, like, good ones. I just have a lot. Okay. Yeah, he has a lot I don't have... I, I have, have one good one, and then that's it. Yeah. All right, I'll go 101, Same. 102. All right. All right. I'll take the three again. All right, I'm going to start us off with the 101, the G1. I don't even know if we still do that, but... G -O, I'm taking, the G01. <laughs> I'm taking the subway. And just when I talk about the subway, I'm talking about all the, the bad things about it because that's where all the creatures, that's where all the creatures come out, especially at night. I've experienced it. I've turned into it. I, I jumped the turnstile. I stepped on a woman's foot and then I laughed in her face and then I laughed for 20 minutes on the whole subway ride thinking it was the funniest thing ever. If you're in New York long enough, you are you have both seen the villain on the subway and been the villain on the subway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like heroes die so quick yeah, in the subway. Yeah, the subway the place you just you know You don't know what you're going to get. You don't know you don't know if like you're going to get people dancing, people singing, people selling you fucking crack. You don't know if you're going to get a guy shitting on the subway. Yeah. There's some there's some amazing things you can see on the subway for sure. But also, they're terrible things, and uh, that's why it's uh, my, my 101. Yeah, every time I get off the subway, it feels like I need 15 minutes to, like, decompress <laughs> and just break down what the fuck I just saw on that train. Not everyone can handle the subway. No, it's hard. It, it wears on you mentally. Some of mm -hmm. you people out in, like, the Midwest right now have no idea what, you know, you have no idea what's Remember going on Remember when Sexy here. came to New York for the first time over the draft weekend? He, he like, wanted to go so to the subway so bad. He was so excited to get on It was, on like, one subway. of his, like, tourist spots. We're like, yo, <laughs> yeah. we could take you to a pizza spot. We could show you, like, damn, Park State Building. He's like, I want to ride the subway. I'm like, mm, it's okay. It's just, like, hot and <laughs> psychotic <laughs> behavior. That's the worst part about the subway is, like, the temperature control is always the opposite of what it needs to yeah, it's be. It's like 118 degrees in the summer and then it's like 
negative fucking 14 in the winter. It doesn't <laughs> make any sense. Yeah, you can't dress for the... Whatever you dress for, it's, it's the wrong But you wrong get on way. the subway in the summer, and it's, like, ice cold because the AC's blasting, but mm-hmm. everywhere else is just, like, 120. It's Even wonderful. when it's so hot outside, I never feel comfortable wearing shorts on a subway either. <laughs> I feel true. like you're going to catch something. Yeah. <laughs> something you don't want. It's the grimiest yeah. of grime down yeah. there. All right, it's a good it's a good 101. Uh, I'm going to go next with the 102. I'm going with brunch. The activity of brunching. Can There's, I? Uh, I do want I have to be more specific. You don't have to be, but this was going to be my first round pick as well. Go, <laughs> no, 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 go bottomless brunch because that but, doesn't okay. exist in other places. That's what makes right. it special. Right, right, right. I definitely, definitely true, but I, I do think like brunch in general just isn't much of a, a, a scene or ac- an activity as it is here. Like I know, I know people actually do brunch, but it's just not the same. I guess. Okay. So I guess you're right. It's bottom. It's I'm the bottom. Bottomless brunch is a right. lifestyle. Here. It is yeah. such a lifestyle. A there's, thing. there's nothing more menacing than waking up and around 10 AM getting that text message from your boys being like, yo, it's just a place and a location. <laughs> and it, it automatically hits that switch in your brain where it's like the worst is coming out of me yeah. today. I'm going to make two steaks by 2 p.m. <laughs> by 2 p.m., I'm throwing up. I'm blacking out. I'm making multiple social mistakes. I'm getting canceled. It's going to be a phenomenal day. And that's why it's the finest, because it's fun. You make memories. Like I said, brings the fucking worst out of you. And if, if you miss brunch, there is not a worse FOMO in the world. So, yeah, so I just want to clarify here. Like, everyone has brunch, obviously, but New York, I, there might be, like, one or two other states that even legally allow this, but bottomless brunch in New York <laughs> is, I swear, you go and you pay, like, a fixed price. It's, like, $40, and it's all you can drink. And if you find the right spots, they do all-you-can-drink margarita. You walk into that place, one person, and you walk out of that place, a completely <laughs> different yes. fucking person three hours later. Like, you get your squad together. You guys know what you're you're in there for fucking business, and you yeah. walk out a new group of people. Dude, if I know we're going to brunch, like, if it's early in the week and I know we're going that weekend, I'm mentally preparing a full fucking week in advance for brunch. It's like going I wasn't, into I wasn't sure you were going to take it, but I'm, that, that was a good pick. That, that was that to was definitely me, the first thing I put that, on there. That is a clear 101 to me. It is the highest of highs. It makes all the other bullshit in the city worth it, knowing that on the weekend, the boys are brunching. Okay. Well, that knocks out like two of the best picks, obviously. I'll play it safe here, and I'll just say the city pizza. Just the pizza in New That's York in general. Pick. Great I didn't pick. think it was going to make it back. Yeah, yeah, it's just built different. I can name like six places off the top of my head that I would rather eat at than like any other place in other states that I have pizza like six nights a week. I, I, I've, I just, I didn't, I didn't even like pizza that much before Plug the I moved. Place. What? Plug the place. Let them know. I mean, Bleecker Street Pizza, Linda Street, Prince Street Pizza, Village Corners. Like, I can go on for fucking days. Percy's. Percy's. That's why. Stop. I almost stopped at Percy's. Uh, the other. I almost just stopped in there to take a picture to send to you, but I didn't want to eat in there. Percy's is the best $1 two dollar right i would argue that the place across the street on seventh ave is actually better than percy's that's not actually 99 cents regardless the pizza here is phenomenal i've never had new haven pizza it, it doesn't have to be one or the other new york pizza is just incredible when i lived in jersey i almost never ate pizza as soon as i moved into new york i moved into brooklyn right across the street from this place called linda street in williamsburg that's my number one on my list and I ate there like four to five nights a week, and then pizza just engulfed my soul. And now all I do is eat pizza in New York City. It's a problem, but it's the best problem of all time. Um, my 201 is, I don't know if I want to go with the parks in New York in general, or I, I'll, I'll go with the parks because I, I love Central Park, but I also love Washington Square Park. It's like one of my favorite yes. places in this. It is like my least favorite. And it's like if this is the finest. If sub if the subway could uh become like a place, you know, like an outdoor place, it would be Washington Square Park. I, I, I like to look at it as like it feels like it's a college campus with no rules at all times. You get you get you know, you have one corner where it's like all the crackheads are hanging out and you know better than to walk by there at night. You got another corner where it's like chess players. Uh, that are, are ripe to take your money, and you might find some people like shooting a documentary in that corner. You've got the dog park. You've got the the fountain, obviously, where there's just homeless people running around. And, like there's there's TikTokers and there's podcasters and there's people selling shit. The energy and there's professional skateboarders on the other side of the thing, and you, there's NYU students everywhere. The energy in that place is just unmatched. it's unmatched, and the people watching is just something that you will not find anywhere else in New York. So I'll go with parks, but if I had to specify one, it's WSP. But we love Central Park as well. Yeah, I mean, th- those are the top two parks. So I don't, I don't think you got to specify. Like, sure, there, there might be other cool spots, but like you said, unmatched the vibes in those places. Um, okay, so for the two hundred two, I'm gonna go with another 
food item that I think is a staple of New York. Maybe it's the East Coast. Coming from California, this wasn't just on the scene that much. And that's a bacon, egg, and cheese. Because wow, wow. kind of surprising. No, I mean, it's I, from California, I would never. It's just normal to be bacon, egg, and cheese. I was going to say, because I don't think of bacon, egg, and cheese as a New York thing. Because we like that was a staple yeah, of us growing up in, 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 in right. New Jersey. That's but, fair. but to me, bacon, egg, and cheeses fall in that category with, with pizza. Where it, it's just like, obviously, you can put bacon, eggs, and cheese together and make a fucking breakfast sandwich out of it. But it's just not something you think about. Like, every day I wake up, I'm thinking, where am I getting my bacon, egg, and cheese from? Am I making it at home? Am I going to stop at Bagel Pub? It just became an absolute staple of my diet. And they don't make them like they do here anywhere else. Well, I didn't realize it wasn't a normal thing. That's yeah, why. I don't even mean, usually get them on a bagel. I, get, I, mean, I like them on a roll. Yeah, I, I'm the same way, but it's just like the New York bagels, everything like New York ba- breakfast sandwiches, just right. it, it hits on a different level for right. sure. And it kind of goes with brunch, you know, after you, you passed out fairly <laughs> early last night because you started super early. The next morning, what do you need? You need that recovery bacon, egg, and cheese. It's the perfect way to cap off the fucking weekend. It's a cure. It's magic yeah. for sure. It's actually a great way to start off your, your day every day. It's the bacon, egg, and cheese. I got one. This is where animal goes off the rails. No, I got one <laughs> more good one, and then I go off the rails. But yeah, you're right. So I got yeah. it twice. So okay. yeah, technically. All right, so my uh, 20102, whatever the hell I am. For my second pick, I'm going with when the Knicks are good. When the Knicks, I experienced that the year when the Knicks were good, and when they went, they were fifth in the uh, Eastern Conference. They went to the mm-hmm. play- playoffs. The city was electric. The vibe was electric. Everyone was in a good mood. I hate the city, but when the Knicks were winning, and I came here, everyone was cheerful. Everyone was happy. People were in the streets, just like laughing. Everyone had Knicks gear on. Like it changes the city. It's nice. You start to see smiles every once in a while. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Like the people of New York, for the most part, they're probably good people, but. They're so much better when the Knicks are winning. That's very fair. The energy here is very... <laughs> Bing bong. There we go. Oh, shit. Bing bong. Yeah. The, the energy here is very different when the Knicks are good. Yeah, it's the the one time when I don't mind being in the city, especially like at night hanging out with people because you the people, everyone's in a cheerful mood. It's fun, especially right out here by MSG. My Run third pick is... Uh, this is one that I hate about New York City here. I went for just with something I love. Now I'm going with hate. Bert, I get shit on way too much. I got shit on <laughs> three times since we've been working here. And that's more in my entire life. I've been shit on by birds three times in six months living working in New York City versus 30 years of my life. Yeah, it's it's absurd how much the birds think they own this fucking city. I was smoking a cigar the other day, and a bird shit on my cigar. Are you serious? It was insane. How do you not take a picture of that? I was just like, it was so angry in the moment. I threw the cigar you down. You definitely smoked <laughs> down yeah. to the shit. <laughs> well, <I> just <laughs> <laughs> he just flips it around. Like, it's just insane. Like, you're just walking down the street and just shit falls from the sky and hits you. Damn. You know what's crazy? On my list, I had people taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've seen so, with the one that I one have. day I sent you guys a picture yeah. just across the street from our office. Someone was shitting in between two cars. Yeah. Happens on the subway, happens on the court. That's not, this is not my pick, but I just thought it was funny. Yeah. That I mean, there's just too much shit in New York City. How about that? Yeah. Bird shit, rat shit, people shit, dog shit on the sidewalk. There's shit everywhere. Yeah, you love it. That's it. I hate that. I'm done. At 302. A O two. Uh I feel like I might I might have to specify this more. Uh the finest, right? We want to talk about the finest. The people. Not not the tourists, but like the locals, the people who live in Manhattan. They're a different breed of people. They're like they're always in a hurry. They're very direct, very honest to kind of a little bit of a fault. They don't give a fuck if they're insulting you. But there's something cool about it. Like, you you kind of, you, you know it, you get it. Especially when you start living here, you just become one of those people. They're just very unique. They're just yeah. like, oh, that dude's, like, from New York. Yeah. He's just... They're very easy to spot, I think, outside of New York, too. Because mm-hmm. you don't blend in anywhere else. Like, New York, you can blend in and be, like, a, you know, an asshole. You can be a, a fast-paced jerk, right? And right. just, like, walk around and you, f- you fit in. But if you're in, like, the Midwest, you're walking around... A, a supermarket like a maniac people are gonna be like what the fuck is wrong with that guy he's probably a yeah. New Yorker it's like when you're walking around the city you you know when someone lives there when they're just like weaving past people because they've had this walk a billion times they're sick of the fact that people block their fucking their path to wherever the hell they're going and it, it's honestly made me like more of a I don't want to say cold might be aggressive but just like Less oh. welcoming person. I remember 100%. when I left. It does. When I first left New York, um, I was in Cape Cod, and I'd be, like, walking down the street. Someone would be walking the other way, and they would say hi. And I would completely ignore them because it was just never on my radar to, like, stop and start talking to people since you move here. It's like that's yeah. just never an option. Don't talk to me. No, hell no. You're not talking to people around here. You're talking to me. You probably want something. I don't want to yeah. get to you. Yeah, hell no. It's usually that's how I feel in New York. 100%. Okay. Um, it's the worst and the best type of people. So for the... 303, the AO3. I'm going to take something that's near and dear to my heart. 
And I know these are available everywhere, but when I think of them, I think of riding them here, and that is city bikes, baby. Or fucking bike. And uh, city bikes are my preferred method of transportation. Rain, sleet, hail, snow, 2 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 a.m. Doesn't fucking matter if I'm going to the gym, if I'm going to work. My favorite time to ride a city bike, you know, I don't promote this, but when I'm hammered, (laughs) there's nothing more free. Like, I'm going out when you're just absolutely swerving around the city. Hell yeah. You know, I'm I'm out at a bar. It's like 2 a.m. I'm like, I got to go home. I got to hop on a city bike. And it's just, when I was growing up, I wanted a Jeep Wrangler so bad because when you take the top off, it's just a freeing feeling. Same feeling. It's the only feeling I can get here like that. In the city, transportation's amazing. You can pretty much get anywhere on a city bike. I've I've rode them from Harlem, 110th Street, all the way down to my apartment on West 4th Street. Like, you can get you anywhere in a city that's supposedly giant. It's, nothing's too giant for city bikes. Fucking love them. 401. I wanted to... I wanted to go with something that was like the uniqueness of the of the night scene. Like you can, there are there's Shit. a bar for basically anything that you're interested in, right? There's, there's like sports bars. There's literally like a game bars. There's barcades, but there's also like a like the Uncommons down in Greenwich Village. Is like you can go there with your friends, play board games, and get drunk, right? There's the uniqueness of it. But I want to go a little bit more specific. Cocktail names at bars. Okay, if you go to a good cocktail bar. The names on the menu for their drinks are outrageous. You know, I can't really think of them off the top of my head, but you know, when you hit a good cocktail, I know bar, what you're yeah. talking about. I mean, sure. there's no Even way you remember the, those names. If no. I get the Chow Chow menu right now, I bet you that entire thing is like, like animals ass sweat. Like that's yeah. going to be the name of a of a cocktail bar. So I don't know if there's a normal thing outside of New York, but they they do it here. You know, you always feel like an asshole ordering a drink just because the name's ridiculous. It's like, do I really got to say this? Can you just give me the fucking and you just list off all the ingredients? Yeah, like people know sex sense. on a beach, but they get like really in depth with the different names. It's almost like five best friends dirty came sex together on the beach with a mermaid. Yeah, it's like dirty <laughs> condomless sex on the beach. Like they, yeah. they start, you know, it's like you came together with your homies and you're like, let's make the most outrageous names of cocktails ever. So I'm gonna go with that. The cocktail names i like it i thought you were gonna uh take my next pick with the is this the to2 is that what it's called maybe to2 yeah to2 i'm gonna take the closing time of bars 4 a.m everybody knows that this is the city that doesn't sleep and it's crazy it doesn't matter what time you're out there's always people out there's always things to do doesn't matter if you're hammered at You know, 2 a.m., there's pizza for you. There's fucking empanadas for you. There's whatever the hell you want. You can do at any time in the day, and that's not everywhere, right? Back on the West Coast, shit usually closes around 2. And if, you know, if you're still out, you got to find your way home. A lot of times, you're just shit out of luck. Not here. We're operating at all hours of the day. The the city that never sleeps. Exactly. The the late-night food scene in its own right could be, like, a could be a choice here, you know? It's like you walk out of a bar... And it's like, you look left, there's a Don's. You look right, there's an awesome pizzeria. You look center, there's a fucking halal cart. Like, you get options at 4 a.m. You don't get these types of options at 4 p.m. in most places. Yeah, I would I would make the argument that a lot of New York doesn't even come alive until, like, 10 or 11. Like, that's when the I'm, freaks come out. Yeah, that's, when, that's, that's the fiddlestick hours, all right? <laughs> <laughs> fiddlestick hours. That could be the name of a fucking mixtape. There we go. All right, my T3. You basically just touched on it, but I'm good. You know, we talked about food. I'm speci- specifying on street meat. So all the food carts. I'm talking about the fact that you can get hot dogs, you can get halal, you can get chicken kebabs, you can get lamb kebabs. That's a good one. You can get bacon, egg, and cheese. Tail, like you can get it all. Yeah. And it, it's and it always hits. I love street meat. People, you know, get nervous because they think it's dirty. It's not dirty. It's good for you. It builds you. It makes you stronger. Street meat is uh, what's holding the city together from the hours of, of 2 and 6 a.m. It definitely got me through, like, the first couple months of being here, for sure. And it's affordable. You can get, like, yeah, a whole platter affordable. of meat for 8 bucks. Yeah, it's and so sick. Y- you can't beat that. It's amazing. Um, it's Actually surprised it lasted this long. Probably should have been drafted earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of better food options in New York City. Like, I feel like street meat shouldn't be your number one option but the i mean how expensive things are now like you can't get a lunch for less than like 24 dollars like getting halal food for eight bucks is yeah, yeah. Is two brothers meal. which is an actual restaurant they just have a cart down the, sh- the street and they sell the same food from a cart and it's nine dollars for a platter mm-hmm. can't beat that 
I kind of want to go down the rest of the list that I had just really quick. Get some honorable mentions yeah. out. Uh, honorable mention, people taking a shit was on it. Uh, just rooftops of apartments are electric. I was great. Super one. surprised Late, you didn't take rooftops. I, yeah, you know what? I looking back on it, I wish I wish I had more options. I wish this was a five or six round supplemental. You're, draft. you're a big I, rooftop guy. You should have gone rooftop over the cocktail names. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Cocktail names are absurd, but like it's the rooftops. Mention. Rooftop parties are awesome. Rooftops after the bar, like when the bars close at three or like four, people or whatever. Have an apartment like, hey, it's going to my rooftop. Right, and you yeah. find like a random. A group of friends that you end up on their uh, on their rooftop. There's yeah. like you know, there's there's nothing people up there, that. and then you meet them, and they're cool. And yeah, they're cool. I was gonna write dirty water dogs, but you hit the hit that uh, people riding city bikes the wrong way. That really, you know, I'm usually that person, the dude uh, who parks their car in the fucking bike lane. You know, those are fucking assholes, rats. Uh, just crackheads in general, <laughs> rats, yeah, cockroaches. <laughs> uh, the dudes who sell mi- who used to sell mixtapes in uh, in Times Square that you don't see it anymore because everything's digital. But those yeah. guys were like a really big pillar of Times for Square a long for a long time. time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's always like the people walking around, and you get this in Times Square a lot. But like walking around preaching the word of God, they're like God. <laughs> oh, for sure. God hates people Jesus that have saves. sex, and there's always a crew of like fifty of them. Like, yeah. how do you get all these people together at once? No, I don't. Need, that's crazy. I can't get that many people to like come to a party. These <laughs> yeah. people are all in the streets screaming like maniacs. Yeah, that's all I got. Um, so that is the the herd of goats for this week. That is the episode for this week. Make sure you go check out Pristine Auction. Link down below. Use promo, promo code BDG. I almost said fucking Governor Como out there. Promo code BDGE. <laughs> um, Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and good luck in week seven. Go Broncos. Let's ride. Yeah, well, what do you mean? Let's do that. <laughs>